Hello, Mr. Beard here, and I'm going to walk you through our Poetry unit. I know it's kind of corny and we call it um, Poetry, but the emphasis is really on try. Poetry can be very challenging um, for some students, and the whole idea is not to master ne necessarily every single type of poetry that's ever been known to mankind. But really, it's to try different types of poetry. You know, it's to expose ourselves to different types of creative writing, to different types of self-expression, and to honestly just try. So we go through this, um, starting with the basics and some, some simple uh, terms, some very basic terms in our poetry unit. And then we start getting into more and more complex types of poetry. And after we've completed our poetry portfolio, will be exposed to a little more reading of poetry. Our first term is personification, which is giving human characteristics to inanimate objects or non-human objects. For example, the stars dance playfully in the moonlit sky. Stars cannot dance, so that is personification. She did not realize that opportunity was knocking at her door. Opportunity doesn't have hands. It cannot knock. So it is acting like a person, which is personification. Alliteration is the repetition of the same or similar consonant sounds at the beginning of words. It's important that it's at the beginning, or it'll be something else, which we'll learn here in a moment. So it's at the beginning of words. Consonant sounds at the beginning of words. A consonant is anything that's not a vowel. A-E-I-O-U, sometimes Y are all vowels. We have vowels because they're the most used sound in the English language. So if it's not a vowel, it's a consonant. For example, an example of alliteration is Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. It's that same P sound over and over at the beginning of words, so it is alliteration. All right, and our first poetry portfolio requirements. These are things students must create and must do that must go in their poetry portfolio binders is to write a fictional story about an animal using as much alliteration as possible. They must have 50 plus examples of alliteration. And it must have personification. So personification and alliteration throughout this little story. An example of this is shown here. You can pause the video and read that if you need to. The next word is onomatopoeia. Sound word. Words that come from a sound that sounds like the sound. Like buzz, kerplunk, beep. Can you think of a popular cereal that uses onomatopoeia in its name? I'll give you a hint. It snacks, uh, snaps, it crackles, and it pops. An example of there is there, so you can pause the video if you need to. And your portfolio requirement is to write a poem that uses onomatopoeia. And poems must be a minimum of four lines and have a minimum of four examples of onomatopoeia. Some of these were really fun to read as a class. Um, and kind of fun and goofy, and um, I really enjoyed hearing some students share their work. Here's an example. Another poetry term is a simile. A simile is a comparison of two unlike things, and it usually uses like or as. It must have like or as to be a simile. For example, I slept like a log. It's a comparison of two unlike things. Now, you don't want to say uh, Kobe has a jump shot like Michael Jordan, for example. Those are not two unlike things. They're both, both basketball players who play very similarly. Uh, you want to compare two unlike things. A better example would be Usain Bolt ran like the wind. Usain Bolt is a human being, which is nothing like a piece of air. Um, but you're making these, uh, comparing these two unlike things to make a point. Another example is, yeah, he ran as fast as the wind. You can read all this by pausing the video. I'm not going to bog you down by boring you with the details. Um, a metaphor is very similar, except it doesn't compare using like or as. It just says something is something else. For example, her eyes were glistening jewels. My sister is a bear in the morning. You're saying something is something else to make a point. It's a figure of speech. That's what FOS stands for. It's a figure of speech to make a point. And then we've got several examples here that you can read if you so choose and quiz yourself on.
can stop this video um, and quiz yourself if you need to practice. All right, free verse is poetry with no specific rules, has no rhyme scheme, has no specific structure, and Robert Frost said it's like playing tennis without the net. You can do what you like within the bounds of the fact that you're writing poetry. Our portfolio requirement then was to write a free verse poem that includes two similes and one metaphor. It does not have a set length requirement and it can be about anything you like, although it should be written in lines like poetry. Here's an example um, of what I'm talking about. It's written in lines like poetry. And this, this poem is using metaphors to talk about something else. Pause the video and see if you can figure out what it's talking about. Did you figure it out? It's about a pregnant woman and she's writing about pregnancy. Do you think she feels excited or upset or nervous about this pregnancy? Read it and see if you can decide how you think she feels. This is a prose version of a story and this is the um, poetry version version of the same story. Again, poetry is written in lines and stanzas. Alright, our next poetry term is end rhyme. End rhyme is rhyme that occurs in the last syllables of lines of poetry. A couplet is two lines of verse joined by rhyme that form a unit. For example, students go to school because they know it's cool. You may not agree with this, um, but it is definitely a couplet. School and cool rhyme and they're paired together. They're both on the same topic and they form a unit. It's important in couplets that they share a same idea or are connected in some way. You don't want one line to be talking about um, French class and the next line talking about space. That would be disjointed and not a true couplet. If they're late to class, they must have a pass. That's another example. Some end, some end rhyme examples in a R&B song. I'm like a walking bank. Tell me what you drank. Tell me what you think. You get that ank sound at the end of the words. It's really, really common in rap and hip hop. Here's a more traditional example of end rhyme in Robert Frost's Dust of Snow. Here's two examples of couplets. And another famous example of couplets in a nursery rhyme. Your assignment then is to write 10 couplets that demonstrate end rhyme. They do not have to be on the same to topic, but the couplet itself must be a cohesive unit that shares one idea. Next word is internal rhyme. Rhyme that occurs within a line rather than at the end. For example, my love flutters like a dove up above. It's occurring within this line, not the end of the line. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, a rapping at my chamber door. Love, 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 uh, Poe, and this is obviously uh, from The Raven, which we will read later once we get through our, our uh, attempt at writing. And, and part of the reason we, we write first and read later um, is, is that we don't want students to be attempted or uh, intimidated to attempt to try. Um, we want students to be able to try their hand and not worry about if it's if it's great or um, if it's world class. Um, because honestly, as freshmen in high school, it's not probably going to be to that uh, publishable quality, world class quality yet. Um, writing is a process and not necessarily an instant destination. So that's part of the reason that we save reading these great great stories and poems until the end. But we will certainly get there. And, and you can see, as I kind of got off topic here, you can see uh, the internal rhyme throughout Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Next one is sight rhyme. Words that look like they rhyme, but they don't. It's also called eye rhyme. For example, slaughter and laughter, the word, if you just looked at the word, if you were not a non, if you were a non-native English speaker and you, you were reading these words for the first time, you think, oh, those should rhyme. Um, but by the way they're pronounced, they do not rhyme. Fart and wart, two disgusting examples that look like they should rhyme, but they don't. Have and cave look like they should rhyme, but they don't. What type of rhyme is represented in this poem? Take a second and see if you can figure it out. I'm going to give you a hint. There are three different types that we've already talked about. 
in this poem. See if you can figure it out. All right, write a poem that consists of end rhyme, internal rhyme, and sight rhyme. This is going to take some more th some thinking. This was a challenge for some students, but most students were able to do this. Um, so good job. The next portfolio requirement is that we had to come up with a list of 12 important events in your life. Just 12 events in your life that are have been important. And I, I gave an example here. And I'll tell you what we're going to do with those here in a minute. But we're going to press pause with those. I don't want to tell you yet. Um, the next poetry term is assonance, which is similar sound between internal vowels and neighboring words. For example, example, hear the mellow wedding bells, another Poe line. See that vowel E repeated throughout. The crumbling thunder of seas. Dead in the middle of little Italy, little did we know that we riddled two middle men who didn't do diddly. That I sound throughout this passage is an example of assonance. Consonance is the repetition of the same consonant sounds in the middle or at the end of words. Remember, it's not at the beginning or that be alliteration, it's at the end or middle of words. For example, don't eat in that tent, all mammals named Sam are clammy. And this is definitely used a lot in hip hop and R&B and rap, as an example. All right, now what we're gonna do with that, those 12 events from your life is you're going to start out um, creating a sonnet using those 12 events in your life. And a sonnet is a 14 line poem, so why 12 and not 14? I'm gonna tell you that here in a minute. Now, one of the things we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on is iambic pentameter, um, but it is important that you know there are 10 syllables in each line. It sounds hard, but William Shakespeare wrote over 154 of these, and in fact, we called them uh, this form of sonnet a Shakespearean sonnet, named after him because he's so masterfully created so many of these. They follow the A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G rhyme scheme. So these are the first 12 lines that we're looking at in our creating in our sonnet. You want to start by creating, you know, talking about your first event. A lot of students chose their birth, and that's fine. And that will end with your A rhyme. Then the next line, which will be your next event, will end in your B rhyme. The next event will again rhyme with the first line because that's your A rhyme. So each letter that's matched up, that means that this is the end of each line. And if it's the same letter, those lines rhyme. If it's a different letter, then it does not rhyme. For example, C does not rhyme with B. Um, they have their own rhyme. At the end, after your first three quatrains, quatrain is just a stanza that has four lines. You may know quattro means four. You have your last little couple. Remember, we talked about couplets as a rhyming unit. This is called the churn. Uh, it, it adds a new dimension to the poem or reflects on the poem and wraps it up. So it'll be unconnected. So you're going to have your 12 events from your life that are going to be your first, and then you want to wrap up with a couplet that talks about the meaning of your life in general. I'm going to show you an example. So this is my list of 12 events in my life, and this is what I came up with. This first line deals with when I was born, when my brother was born, preschool, kindergarten, first grade, first time I had to move, etc. So I turned to these first three quatrains are all about events in my life. And then the cup, the last couplet or the turn is just kind of reflecting on life. It says life is crazy with its up and downs, but overall not too shabby, this go round. Again, this is something I kind of put together quickly, you know, not world class by any stretch, does not follow ionic pentameter, um, but it shows you what you can do. And it's, some students came up with some great examples, some much better than this. Um, so I really appreciate even though this was a challenge, I really appreciate everyone trying and mostly succeeding. So again, this is what the, the unit's all about, is, is trying your hand at a new form and sometimes a difficult form of, of writing. And now that we've kind of tried our hand at some, I do want to show you, um, it's talking about iambic pentameter, which I've already talked about. I do want to show you uh, some examples. Uh, this is a modern day Shakespearean sonnet talking about you know this, this divorce her parents' divorce that she had to go through, which um, 
it was certainly a trying experience for her. Uh, she eloquently uh, explores it in her sonnet. Um, and the next one is just about uh, this, this poet's favorite type of music. These are modern examples of sonnets. Here, if you go to this uh, website, or, or just Google Shakespearean sonnets, Spark Notes is cool because you can go there and look at all of Shakespeare's sonnets and, and side to side, with side by side, modern translations. Um, but this is my favorite, one of the greatest love poems of all time, uh, Sonnet 18 by William Shakespeare. Now, if students still really could not get this. If you're watching this video still, and you could not do the, the 12 events in your life, then let's break it down even more. Go ahead and write a quatrain using Shakespearean sonnet rules inspired by the following images. So about babies, childhood, you could talk about your siblings being born, you could talk about memories you have from your own childhood, but just something that is in some way connected to these images. Just one quatrain, four lines following AB, AB format. Then, write a quatrain using Shakespearean uh, sonnet rules inspired by this image. And after you've finished with that, I want you to write one that talks about high school. And you'll notice that you've just written a sonnet. Uh, and this, this one, this picture, will go last. It'll be the last quatrain. If you put them in order, you'll notice that you just wrote a sonnet about, really, life. And so make your turn again about the meaning of life. Has your life been great? Have you had fun? Has it been trying? Um, but a turn or a couplet that talks about life in general. All right, that is our poetry unit up to uh, today's date, which is again February 27th. And we will certainly be adding to this as we go through our poetry unit. Uh, so thank you for listening. And again, if you ever have questions or concerns that, that can't be covered in class, um, shoot me an email, and I'll be happy to help you. Thanks.